2020, when I was 13 at a standard appointment with a new pediatrician, my doctor told me I had a heart murmur. She told me it was probably nothing, but wanted me to get it looked at by a cardiologist. My family and I didn't think anything of it and figured the doctor was just being cautious. But then, a few days later, after an ultrasound, I was told I had a two centimeter long hole between my two chambers, a birth defect known as atrial septal defect. They told me I would have to have open heart surgery as soon as possible. I was terrified. I'd always had a fear of needles and blood, and seeing character after character die from surgical issues in Gray's Anatomy didn't help my feelings either. But less than two months later, I had the surgery to close the hole, and it was successful. After I got out of the hospital, I wasn't allowed to run and couldn't carry things heavier than 10 pounds for two months, at risk of hurting my healing process. But I couldn't predict what would really end up damaging me the most. In the weeks leading up to the surgery and during the recovery time, my friends and I would make jokes about my situation, laughing about how I literally had a hole in my heart. None of us had ever really experienced something like this before. So in the first couple months before and after, we would talk about it a lot. Also, many people would ask about my scar or why I was out of school, so the topic came up a lot. But after a few couple of weeks, a few of my friends started making comments about how they felt I was talking about it too much, or that I was making the procedure my entire personality. So I stopped bringing it up and shut down my other friends' jokes and comments in fear they too would start thinking I wanted too much attention. But not having any friends to joke with and talk to made me feel really isolated, especially because in the months following the procedure, my entire life became centered around it. I had to get routine ultrasounds, a heart monitor, and keep an hourly log of my heart rhythm. The surgery continued to impact my life like it did before, but now the difference was I didn't feel like I could talk about it. What I know now that I didn't realize then is that attention from a support system after a traumatic event is not selfish, but necessary. Just the word attention alone can invoke negative connotations. Maybe you think of your friend who's constantly trying to fish for compliments, or a celebrity who's always pulling publicity stunts to hold on to relevancy. But attention is a necessary part of life and relationships, whether through a parent, friend, significant other, or teacher. For example, it has been shown that students perform better in smaller classes since, according to Fremont University, quote, it results in individual attention and better communication between the teacher and student. See, there it is again, attention. How else are we expected to learn and grow if not for feedback from others? An important part of understanding and appreciating this fact is being aware that like everything in life, there needs to be balance. It's never good to have too much or too little of something, and this applies to the attention we give and receive. When people don't understand this concept, they think of attention negatively, since the only form of attention they've noticed is when it's given too much. Since I previously thought of attention this way, I was worried that people would perceive me in this light and would think of me as self-obsessed and self-absorbed. When I tried researching attention to find more about its benefits, all that came up were articles and studies about attention-seeking behavior, only focusing on its negative and harmful aspects and how to stop it. But to get through adversities we face in life, it's important to build strong support systems that give the right amount of attention. Typical systems include family and friends that help you through emotional issues by giving feedback and comfort. According to Dr. Jesse Fawn at the University of Washington, quote, support systems can also help people gain perspective of the world and also provide reinforcement for the positive things they're doing. Though attention is a major part of a healthy system, support and attention are very different from each other. While attention is simply the acknowledgement of your situation, Support is when people truly want to be involved and help you with your issues. According to Shelley Taylor, a psychology professor at the University of California, proper social support, especially after a traumatic event, can lower the risk of long-term PTSD. Many people think they can do and handle everything on their own and like to push away types of relationships that aim to help through collaboration. This mindset is really harmful when applied to almost any case. Let's look at surgery specifically. The protocol doctors prefer and suggest is having a person stay with you or visit you frequently in the weeks following a procedure. Not only to help with physical restrictions, but so you can have someone who cares about you and to talk with. This is a clear example of how important a support system is, especially after major events, as researchers have shown. In a published study at the Penn State Journal of Anthropology, Dr. Paul Edwards compared the discharge and readmission rates of 1,874 post-surgery patients. 593 had a confirmed and steady support system, either virtually or physically. 
1,281 did not, and researchers saw a clear difference between the two groups. Patients with support systems were discharged an average of 26 hours earlier than those without. They also had a much lower rate of readmission. Proper support systems motivate you to push yourself to get better and can provide advice on how you should go about certain decisions. When I was in the hospital, my mom and dad constantly motivated me to walk around and eat and drink. Without their encouragement, I'm sure my recovery process would have been much harder and longer. Looking back, I constantly had nurses and surgeons checking on my physical well-being, but rarely did they ask how I was doing emotionally. Luckily for me, my mental health was fine in the beginning, so I didn't notice the lack of attention in that area. However, many patients' mental healths are not so dismissible. In heart surgery, depression after procedures is so common it has its own name, cardiac depression. According to Timothy Legg, a psychologist and nurse, 25% of all people who undergo cardiosurgery experience serious depression following. I didn't realize how much having a support system helped me in my healing process, and now that mine was gone, my mental health began to decline. Luckily with time, I found friends that gave me the platform I needed to heal emotionally and who continue to do so. Now, when I see people around me going through major life events, I always make sure they know they can talk to me and never feel the way I felt about dealing with trauma. I hope all of you have or will now seek out someone you never feel guilty or selfish talking to as well. Maybe to some of you in the audience, this notion is obvious. Maybe you have a strong group of family and friends you know who will listen to your problems and not shame you for sharing them, instead providing you support and feedback. But maybe you're not sure if you do. In that case, I ask you to ask yourself if there's a negative situation in your life you're not sharing in fear of being rejected by people who are supposed to be supporting you. Thank you.